Hi, I am Neluli Raj Shekhar. I promote three YouTube channels. One is uh, Neluli Music, which deals with popular music. The second one is uh, Om Hindu Music, which deals with Hindu devotional songs. And the third one is Pieta Christian Music, which deals with exclusively with Christian devotional songs. Now, many of my friends and people like you who subscribe and support me ask a few questions. And generally, there are around three areas. The first question is, you know, why are you doing this? What's in it for you? Legitimate question. And the second one is to say, how are your channels any different from the thousands of channels that or maybe millions of channels on YouTube? Again, a good question. And the third one is, what's your view about the future of these channels? Do you have some kind of a dream or a vision about these channels? Where do you see this going? So <laughs> I've been listening to these and I've been answering individually, individually to some people, but then I felt it's probably good to do a small video to explain these because they're very interesting and uh, I would say very legitimate questions and I felt I had to explain. Now that takes me into three different areas. One is about my journey with music as my partner. And that goes back almost 50 years. So I'll have to talk a little bit about that journey as to how things and people and experiences have influenced me into music and to the kind of music that I do. The second question is about people. The second point I need to talk to is about people. There have been very important people for me in my life in this journey for music. And some of them have been extremely supportive. They have made me what I am. They are much more qualified, skilled and, and, and how outstanding people who have joined me in this journey and helped me along. So I need to just mention a few of them who have been part of this journey. The third part is uh, uh, talking about the nature of these channels and, and the question about what's the future, where do we go with this, what's my vision about these channels and where do you think I can take it or where do you think those channels can go. So it's uh, about 50 years of life that I'm trying to compress into a video. So I request you to please uh, watch this video till the end. And uh, hopefully by the end of it, you will have an idea about not only the channels, but what I am as a person and what influences me to do these things. And uh, what are my, some of my dreams and expectations? So I think there will be a connect at the end in, in some different ways. So if at the end of it, you find that, you know, there are things that you would like to support, things that you like and you would like to share or support, please do that. I have been in love with music right from my childhood. I love music. I've never learned music. Professionally, I've not learned music. I was more interested in composing music rather than performing or technically understanding more about it. So when I was about, about 17, I think, I composed my first song. It's a Malayalam song called Nisha Gandhigal. That composition uh, was liked by many of my friends and some of my friends who were singers actually sang those songs in competitions and festivals and some of them got even prizes for that. But that was very reassuring. It gave me some confidence to start doing it. That particular song was actually recorded professionally about 18 years later. That sort of started me off on a track where I started getting more into composing music. But then after my studies, after my post-graduation and uh, a short stint with the Indian bank, I took up a job and moved to Doha, Qatar. And there uh, it was a busy life. So I had to make a choice because the chances were, or the opportunities were not that much to do music there. So it was slowly going out of my life. But then something really nice happened. I came across two professionals in music. One was Udaya Chandran, who's an ace tabla player. He became my friend. And another one was Mridula Chandran, who was a keyboard artist and a, and a very nice musician. So we got very friendly and every weekend 
literally every weekend, which was Friday and Saturday in, in Middle East, we used to get together at home. So Chandran would bring his tabla and Mrugalan would bring his uh, keyboard and we started uh, working on music. A lot of fun jamming, doing a lot of fun stuff. And the third thing that came into that mix was my wife, Chandrika. She writes poetry, she writes songs, lyrics, and she started writing. She was quite interested in this and she started writing a lot. So I had a very steady supply of songs coming in and that was exciting. That made me even more interested to start doing music. So during that period, about two years, I think, I composed almost 60 songs and a lot of very different genre, different kinds of music, devotionals, Christian devotionals, Hindu devotionals. We did um, light, folk, all, sort, all types of music. That was when another strange thing happened in my life. I met with uh, K.K. Menon, who was heading CBS those days. CBS was a big label. I told him that I'm a composer, I want to be a composer. So he said, why don't you send me some scratches, let me listen to them and then I'll get back to you. So those days it were all audio cassettes, you know, small cassettes. So I did about seven or eight songs as scratches, home recordings, and sent it to KK and said, uh, let me know what you think. So KK took those, he listened to it carefully, he loved those songs. KK then called me and said, let's do a recording. That was a break. It was a break and it was a shock for me because I had never done professional recording and I had no clue as to how to go about it. But KK was extremely helpful. So KK gave me two outstanding people to assist me with the orchestration, etc. because I was new to it. And one is Bernie, who's the brother of Ignatius and they together they have done movies, music for so many movies. Uh, so Bernie was one of the people who assisted me with part of the songs and the other portion was done by Mr. P. R. Murali, who is an ace flautist, and he also helped us with uh, the classical part, semi-classical parts of the songs and orchestration. The songs were done by two professional artists, uh, Marcos, KG Marcos, who was a big singer already by then, and a very young girl called Radhika Tilak. She again went on to become a playback artist. Unfortunately, she passed away recently. But she was 16, she was uh, probably, she was about 16 or 17 those days, I think. And uh, it was a break for her as well because she had done a few songs, but this was a whole album where she was doing the female lead. Vasanta Ganangal was a success. It sold quite well because we had sold it to CBS outright. So I didn't know the commercials, how it went, but I know that it, it was received very well and it had a lot of sales. And KK confirmed this to me. Magna Sound was a big label those days and uh, very, very famous and they were doing really popular numbers. So Magna Sound wanted me to do two albums at the same time. One was Padma Dalam, which was a Hindu devotional cassette with 10 songs uh, dedicated to different deities and uh, 10 romantic songs which went into another album called uh, Ashuti Pukri. Both albums were done, sung by uh, professional artists, very professional artists those days, very popular artists like Unni Menon, who still sings in movies, and Sujata Mohan, who also still sings in movies. Very, very popular artists in the South, not only in the South, who's done India as well, with Rahman and many other composers. So that was another big experience because we did two cassettes simultaneously, out of 20 songs, and we did about 10 days or 12 days, if I remember. And then we again sold it outright to Magna Sound. There was an interesting thing that happened there because my childhood friend, Mr. Jay Kumar, who was in Bangalore those times, he, he was in business. He came in and said, you know, I'll produce these songs and then, then we'll sell it to Magna Sound. I said, fine, that's okay. So that is even more fun because he joined and he was there for the whole time of the recording. So it was like a festival, we really enjoyed the recording experience that we had. And again, I was assisted very ably by, again, the two outstanding professionals, P.R. Murali and Bernie. I cannot forget those days, it was, it was so much fun. I said, I'll talk about some people who have influenced me. Jay Kumar's father, who's a well-known professor in Kerala, who was a well-known professor in Kerala, uh, Professor Ananda Kutan, is my guru in terms of my writing, because I also do write fiction and publish. 
so he is my guru for all those aesthetic and uh, artistic things these cassettes also did quite well in the market and now i knew i was hooked the, the experience was too good to leave and i knew that i would stay in this business i'll continue to create songs i decided on that now to cut to present because i'm talking of 30 years back now from to today i've composed a lot of songs many many songs some have been published some have not been published i'm sitting on a lot of home recorded tracks so that was a long journey but then i when i landed in bangalore after my long stay outside india and sort of settled down in bangalore i decided to start a youtube channel so the first thing i did was to start a single channel for all the kinds of music and very quickly i found out that doesn't work it doesn't it doesn't work because people are choosing they want to come to a particular channel for a particular genre or a particular language so it had to be different that's when i first created neluli music neluli music stands for all kinds of light music pop music whatever you call it anything other than classical music and uh, devotional music so anything other than those two will go into neluli music then i created another channel om hindu music which is primarily for hindu devotional songs the third one was pieta christian music which is totally dedicated to christian devotional songs so these three channels gave me the separation i needed and the separation that people like you the subscribers and music lovers also needed and i must say that over the last year these three channels have done reasonably well they have grown organically because i have not invested into marketing or i don't intend to do it either because this is for a kind of music that people like and share and it grows organically i told you i'll talk about some people who have been part of this journey i have mentioned some of them but there are a few more people i need to talk about and the first group is a set of technical people then outstanding musicians were technically have supported me i talked about two of them who assisted me with my recordings now the other person i want to talk about now is jackson aruja jackson is probably one of the best musicians i have ever seen he smells breathes eats music it's so natural to him so he plays certain chords when i ask him you know which chord did you play he doesn't know because whenever he puts his hands on a keyboard it will hit the right notes it's so natural and jackson has been working with me on many of my songs over the past 15 20 years and uh, as you can see uh, if you listen to some of my songs the orchestration and the support with orchestration has been outstanding outstanding so a uh, big thanks to jackson and uh, jackson continues to work with me is based in cochin and jackson has a long history is equally fluent in western as well as in indian music cochin had a rock band long back which was called 13 ad and jackson was the keyboard player for that western band and they created original music ground zero was one of their numbers one of their albums so uh, jackson has been you know it's been a great great asset in my journey and he has helped me so much the other person i must talk about is samji samji arattapura he is a singer he is a composer he is a musician and he owns a home studio called samji audio tracks which is in kochi and i have been doing most of my recording except when i do it in chennai or some other place on bangalore almost all my work is done at kochi in vaitla and he does a great job he relentlessly pursues excellence and doesn't compromise on it so that has also helped me and he's a good friend both of them are good friends as well other people are all artists singers very famous singers have worked with me in this independent space and uh, if you look at my channels you would see that some very big names are there i mentioned about sujada about unni menon now i am going to talk to you about some of the other artists who have worked with me uh, very briefly just a few seconds so that you know it gives a picture of the extent of engagement i've had from established artists working with a relatively small composer the very first is shri p j chandran the big singer of kerala and he has done a song with me sujatha mohan has done several songs with me in tamil as well as in malayalam 
will find them on different channels including devotionals and popular music so jawas's daughter shweta mohan who is a very big singer now has done several songs with me including poetry she has done uh, like music she has done devotionals she has done everything with me and she has done several songs with me and i'm very grateful to her for that g venu gopal another big singer uh, we have done a lot of music together probably uh, the largest number of songs i think i have done with venu gopal my brother has also composed music and he has also sung with them so together i think we must have done a lot of music then i have uh, gayatri shogan superb singer she has done ghazal type songs with me she has done a lullaby with me um, thanks to her then madhu balakrishnan the big singer uh, he has done uh, devotionals like music all sorts of songs with me then i have nivedita who is a singer from mumbai she has done, so recorded several songs in mumbai hindi songs in the in different languages she has done malayalam tamil and hindi songs you will find them on my channel sunita menon who lives in uk she does both western and indian music she has done a couple of very very interesting songs with me then i have a very special person called dr anand kumar who is the head of neurology at uh, amrita medical institute in kochi uh he he should have been a musician he went into medical sciences i keep complaining about it to him but it it, it it's fun but he's got an outstanding voice he has done both the devotional songs as well as like music with me then i have the famous srinivas who has done tamil and malayalam songs with me then uh, i should mention afsal who has done uh, a very interesting song with me and then vini srinivasan who has also done an interesting song with me we balasandran was more of a poet than a lyrics writer but he wrote several songs for me both devotional as well as love songs and they were really of very high quality unfortunately he passed away a few years ago then you have ramesh murli ramesh is very special very very special for me because ramesh works with me during the composing stage he picks up a song in no time and he can sing perfectly he is pitch perfect so he has been singing tracks for thousands of songs for the, for the big singers so uh, while you don't hear his voice in the final product he is behind and some of the very difficult songs that come out so ramesh uh, has been working with me on many songs especially during the track stage uh, he has also sung a few songs for me very very nice to work with him the person i want to mention last because he is very important is madan karki madan karki is very special he is probably the busiest lyricist dialogue writer i don't know what else he does in the tamil industry and he's a, he's a very very busy person he writes for ar rahman you and nilay raja you name it he writes for everybody i have been fortunate to work with him on some of his lyrics uh, he again writes poetry He writes for the films, but I think he's a poet at heart because the two songs that he gave me stand closer to poetry, and I published them. One of them is a love song sung by Nivedita, and the other one is a folk song by Vel Murugan, the famous folk singer in Tamil. I'm now working on a couple of his songs, and uh, he has been a delight to work with, and, and a very passionate person committed to independent music. He runs a portal called Do Pa Do. which is committed to independent music in tamil adarsh vasanth is another lyrics writer he lives in muscat oman he recently wrote a song for me uh, about the onam festival which was published a uh, month ago and uh, is a, is again a very interesting person to work with now i've spoken about quite a few people but there are a lot more people who have worked with me and it's not possible to mention everybody here um but my very special thanks to people who have been part of this journey with me and uh, especially for working with a small music director like me they are all big artists but they have been kind and considerate to work with me and also for their commitment to independent music i also work with uh, especially younger people recently we published an onam song with a band in kochi and a young group of three musicians and you can see it on my video they did a great job with the vocals they supplied the vocals to uh, the onam song uh, it's a nice band and i like their approach so 
we help them to produce that music. So I'm catering to that group of people who are passionate about music but are not passionate about the money part of it and want their music to reach people who are interested in such music. So this was the, the primary reason why I went into these creation of these channels. The second thing was that the music in India, particularly the uh, light music as we call it or pop music as you call it in the West, has been associated mostly with uh, movies. The films have actually supported and created most of the, li the, the best mu light music in India. The other thing that has happened is the explosion of talent. Today there is so much music being listened to and enjoyed by people. This generation listens to more music than any other generation ever did. So on one side there is an explosion of talent, on the other side the production cost has come down because today to produce music you can have a home setup like I have here so you can see some of those. So there's a lot of music being heard and being produced but there is no space to go because these cannot get into movies. So there is a need for a space for what I call independent music. Now if you look at the growth of independent music in other countries, they have gone on to become much bigger than movie, movie businesses or movie music. In many countries you know that rock stars are much, much more popular than movie stars even. So that will happen in India. There's no question about it because music needs to find that, that extra space or that new space for independent music. Now here one more thing is important because most of the commercial publishings have a way of working where any work that you submit is reviewed by a team of people looking at whether it's relevant for us, relevant for our strategy, relevant for the market, is it uh, commercially viable, etc. And if you pass those tests, you know, then they take it for publishing. My concept is very different. I don't do any screening on the, com on the quality of the music. I screen for certain things like, you know, the technical aspects like quality of recording must be reasonably good. Or I look at things like, you know, pornography or explicit politics, etc., which we don't want. So other than that, there is no screening. So what you, whatever you send me, I will publish. And those things will be reviewed by people, enjoyed by people who want to enjoy them. So they may go on to become super hits or it may just be forgotten, which is fine. So there is no screening that happens in this. That's another difference. There was one more issue that I needed to address when we created these channels. Many people do create audio content, but they don't have videos to support them. Now to publish in uh, media like YouTube, you need to have video content as well. So I've created the basic capability to create video content so that uh, if somebody wants to send me uh, some audio materials, I can create um, like a lyrics video or some basic videos I'll be able to create for them and then publish. So I'll support that. And that was an important thing required for independent music, at least in the beginning stages and for people who are not professionally producing it or producing it for money. I have a technical team who works with me who can help people who want to create professional music. So that help I'll be happy to provide. All my contacts, everything is on the screen and on my page. So if any one of you wants to contact me for any support, uh, I'll be very happy to help. Now let me go to something more important, which is what is the future of these channels? Now when you start a channel like this or channels like these, you can only start because at the end of the day I'm doing it for my own enjoyment, my own fun and working with people, helping others to the extent possible to get their work out. So it's a very enjoyable journey, that's all that matters. I'm sure some of you will find some connect with me in different places, both in terms of content as well as as a person. Now if there is anything I can do in terms of working together or supporting uh, music work that you do, please get in touch with me. So I'm asking for two things. One. As a lover of music, I would like you to listen to the music that I publish, share it, subscribe to it, so that we grow a larger group of people to support the music that we are producing. And that's very, very important because without that group, it doesn't make any sense. The second part is for creators of music, either you or your friends or relatives who are working in the area of music or are interested in working in the area of music, 
somebody may have lyrics and somebody else might be uh, a music director who wants to compose music they can come together we can create music and publish so all those things are possible so please get in touch with me now the last thing i want to say is that when music is not treated as a product but rather as a gift to people or to music lovers the entire thing changes that's happened for me the entire thing changes so i'm happy to be where i am right now and i look forward to working with many of you in the future and thank you for the time you have spent watching this video and i look forward to your suggestions comments as well all my contacts are here and a big thanks to all of you thank you very much